Hello, this is Glenn with another episode of Difficult Questions. Today, I wanted to look at patriotism. Specifically, what is patriotism? I was asking my dad, and my dad is super cynical, and he said, patriotism is easy. It's supporting the winner. And I laughed. And then as I was researching, he's kind of right. So I wanted to look at what patriotism is and how we use it and and really ask ourselves what is that ideal what is that that thing when i was in my 20s i was really intrigued with why african countries were not stable why they kept going into revolution after revolution after all i come from the, from the united states and it's relatively stable and and we enjoy our stability and why wouldn't anybody why wouldn't everybody else want this and i was reading a book called the harrowing of mozambique and people from the outside couldn't figure out why a person would follow a leader and then chase people with machetes to get that leader in power and then quickly thereafter follow another leader and chase the same people they were running with, with machetes. So you were in this constant um, revolution and this constant instability. And the author said, people are just looking for safety, stability, and prosperity. And what happens is someone comes along and promises that if you follow me, You'll get safety, stability, and prosperity. And then that doesn't happen once they're in power. So then another person comes along and says, you'll promise it. Because ultimately, people are looking for safety, stability, and prosperity. It's a human condition thing. It's not a Democrat. It's not a Republican. It's not um, any other kind of political or spiritual viewpoint. It's a human thing. But not everybody can have everything equally. That's another human condition thing. We are not altruistic. We support ourselves and the people around us, our family, and maybe our community to the detriment of someone else. So we're constantly in this struggle for, well, everyone is equal, but the person in power is more equal. One of the things that I love as an example is all men are created equal. Well, men meant white male landowners, not women, not people of color, not non-landowners. Men meant a very specific group of humans. So we're always fighting over who's in power, and who gets to create the best version of stability and safety and prosperity. And that's where the tension leads, I think, I've noticed. Another example that I love to bring up is, according, as far as patriotism is concerned, this country, the United States, was founded by criminals, according to the Crown, so it's all about loyalty. Who are you loyal to? Lo- who are you loyal to? And for how long? When we're talking about patriotism, we're talking about words, actions, and violence. And we're talking about those things inside the country versus outside the country. We're also talking about direct action and indirect action. Also, if your words, actions, or violence are part of your duty or part of your job, and they vacillate between the two. And finally, if it's from a dictate of authority, did someone in power tell you to do this? And the the interesting thing is, depending on the situation, we have found that to be either 
patriotic or unpatriotic. The thing about violence is we see violence as not good unless you're wearing a uniform. Then we see it as necessary and maybe unpatriotic, maybe criminal, but we can't tell until history happens. Enough time and enough distance away from the event gives us, gives us reference to decide on if that is unpatriotic, patriotic, or criminal. One of my favorite quotes is, I am committed to maintaining law, order, and stability in this country. Problem. The person that said that was a prime minister of South Africa during apartheid, and he was talking about squashing any black rebellion. So again, depending on our leadership, depending who we're loyal to, and depending on history, that is either patriotic or unpatriotic. I wanted to explore some patriotic conundrums. First, we'll start easy. Flag waving. I, I am not a flag waving kind of guy. I live in the United States. We know we live in the United States. I don't need to carry a flag to show that I am proud of the United States. It's just me. But I have a friend that he was a flag waving American. And in the George W. Bush era, when we were invading Iraq and Afghanistan or liberating, however you want to look at it, mostly it's invading now with history, uh, the international community was not too happy with us. And he was abroad on a cruise ship and he brought an American flag with him. And at that time, uh, Americans weren't so popular abroad. And the big trick was to say that you were Canadian because then you didn't get into any trouble. But he wanted to wave his flag. And I thought, buddy, <laughs> is it worth getting into a conflict over your love of this flag? It's also officially illegal to wear the flag as clothing and we have a lot of flag wearing people that view themselves as patriotic i was listening to an interview with two separate military people and one said it's fine and the other as long as you're you're wearing it with pride and with respect and the other said no it's a flag it's not a piece of clothing. It's law. So what is patriotic? The next conundrum is criticizing your country, both inside and outside. Uh, for this, I have a, a couple examples. So in the U.S., we have a history with um, racism, with slavery, and with treating people of color um, not so well. And we have some people that feel that we need to be challenged because it's still not, um, it's still not a good experience for a lot of people. So they use public platforms to challenge this. Most famously, uh, the Mexico City Olympics, I believe in 68 or 69, with uh, Black Power Fist on the podium. Is that patriotic? You're criticizing your country quietly, but you're performing an action. You're taking away from the Olympic construct to point direction to some Thing that is not about the Olympics. However, in, I would say, our democracy, challenge is accepted and challenge is patriotic. So some people viewed that as completely unpatriotic. Some people viewed that as brave and very patriotic because they were making a stand 
on how their country was run and saying this is not uh, acceptable. Same with Colin Kaepernick and kneeling. Some people say it's not your place. Some people say, well, what is your place? Is it just politicians that can criticize? Is it just people not in their jobs that can criticize? <clears throat> that can criticize because you're still part of the United States. You're still part of the country, whether or not you're at your job or you're not. Are you allowed to make a stand given our freedoms? Well, that's in, in an argument, right? Some people view that as not good. Back to the George W. Bush era, the Dixie Chicks were at their own concert with their own audience abroad, and they criticized J George W. Bush, said, he doesn't speak for us. And patriotic people got very angry with the Dixie Chicks, and they destroyed their albums and boycotted their concerts and said, you are not American. And are the Dixie Chicks not allowed to voice their opinion to their own audience because it's not political? However, and they're not politicians, but they're people. Do only politicians get to voice political criticisms? And the other thing that made them made people angry was it was outside the country. You can criticize within the country, but you can't criticize without the um, outside of the country. We have to show unity. Again, there are these what 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 is right, what is wrong. Um, I personally, if I don't agree with someone, I don't agree with someone. Uh, I'm always respectful, but never afraid. And. And at some point, if someone wants to talk about something or I feel it necessary to talk about something, I'll do it. And some people view that as not my place. Okay. I don't know the answer. Speaking of politicians, back in the George W. Bush era, because I was just thinking a lot about this, uh, Colin Powell went to the United Nations and told the United Nations that under influence from from his boss from George W. Bush, that there that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction, and we knew that. So now we have a leader lying to other leadership in the world in order to influence them to support our own countries, our own leadership's directive to liberate Iraq. So is that patriotic? Is lying patriotic? Is, is lying patriotic because your boss told you to and your boss is the president? We're hitting that now with the Capitol riots. They're saying that the president, President Trump, told them to do it. And, of course, President Trump's team said, I did not tell them to do that. But the argument is, are they guilty if they earnestly thought their commander-in-chief told them to enact this? My quick answer, they lost, therefore they are unpatriotic. <laughs> that It's just that simple. But... That is a debate. When do we accept the dictates of leadership? In a lot of war situations, you get into really ugly instances where, let's say, in Vietnam, Cambodia. We weren't supposed to be in Cambodia. We were bombing a country that we are not at war with because we needed to get to the Vietnamese that were crossing the border. Who told us to do that? Well, Commander-in-Chief made that decision. The international community, community we, we denied ever being in Cam Cambodia because we weren't supposed to be, because the, the rules of war, if there are any rules of war, right? When? That's, I, I get why we try to make rules in war, but 
it's war. We're killing people. So I wanted to get to, to another conundrum, joining the military. So you're dying for your country. You, you're going to die for your country, son? It's very patriotic, right? That sounds great, very heroic. It's worth, I'm going to join the military. So it is patriotic to join the military. Now, once you're in the military, the realities of the military are you, you you, have, you may have to kill people. I was listening to a gunner talk about how he was told repeatedly, you know you have in this job you will have to kill people. You will have to kill people. You will have to kill people you do not know. You will have to kill people that we just tell you to, you have to open fire on. And you have to be okay with that. And then he was talking about a story where he opened fire on this building and women and children started evacuating the building. So he was firing on a building that wasn't filled with men and that disturbed him. Yes. <laughs> what is patriotic? <laughs> this is difficult. This is very difficult. Leaving the blood and guts for a while. The easiest way to isolate yourself from things that are happening in your country that you don't agree with is to leave your country. And I've had a couple friends that have left during when, when Trump was president. And they were concerned about their family and their livelihood and their safety and stability of their children. So they went to Canada. And is that patriotic? It happened to be the same flag-waving guy. <laughs> well, he then got married to a Canadian. They had kids. They were living in the United States. And then they said, ah, United States is getting a little weird. When Trump got in office, we're going to Canada where it's more stable. So they left. Now, is that patriotic? For me personally, it kind of sticks in my craw. But then again, it's probably just because I miss my friend. But... Um, he says, yeah, he's still a proud American. He just, he can't, he can't chance the volatile nature of the United States right now, which, which I understand. But is that patriotic? Is that unpatriotic? Let's get into information. So Edward Snowden releasing secrets. Is he patriotic? Is he a traitor? Well, to the government, he's a traitor. I personally appreciate knowing that my government is spying on me. I, I like to know that information. The government doesn't like me to know that information. What is patriotic? To who? I remember in 2003, I saw the video of a guy in a gunship shooting people in Iraq. And I believe the reason they were being shot is they were out past curfew. That's it. It's a war zone, so rules change. If you're out past curfew, you may get shot. And the the guys in the the gunship were talking about it very candidly and kind of unemotionally and without real respect for ending human life. And I think in the military, you have to get like that because you're killing people. So... If you are sad every time you kill somebody, you're not going to be worth anything. <laughs> you're going to be depressed all the time and you won't be able to do your job. So I don't know if that's patriotic. I don't know if that's unpatriotic. I appreciated seeing that, that gunship video because then I better know what it's like to be a, in, in the military. And I also appreciate Edward Snowden because I wanted to know what my government is up to, even though they don't want me to know. And the argument is, well, he, Ed, the, by leaking information, he probably caused the death of some Americans. Well, if you're in the Army, isn't your job to die for your country, son? So let's talk about job versus duty. Uh some people go into the military because they feel a duty to, saw, to, to be, uh, to help America. 
to die for your country. Some people need a job. Some people are looking to get out of their bad situation. When things happen, bad things happen, some people say, well, he's just doing his job. Or when they need bad things to happen, they say, do your duty. So which is it? And depending on history, depending on the situation, we choose to either fall back to, well, he's just doing his job, or he was following the dictates of duty. He needed to do this. So Edward Snowden, his supporters, hey, he was doing his duty as an American citizen. This isn't right. I have this information. I don't care if it's illegal. I don't care if I'm going to get in trouble. I have to do this to the, for the rest of my countrymen. To people in the military, hey, you're putting us in jeopardy. You just gave out some secrets that will probably get some operatives killed. That's unpatriotic. That's, you're a traitor. Man, these are difficult questions, right? Not a light one. So capping off the military, and I don't want this to be so dark, but man, we're talking about some pretty brutal brutal stuff. Our nation has toppled or helped to topple multiple governments in our interests. So if people are in our own country are working to topple a government that they see as not worthy of being in power, who gets to decide what is right and what is wrong? And I think it's history. And again, back to my my father's supporting the winner. Whoever wins, that's patriotism. The losers are traitors. It's just that simple. One of the things I see is you can be a freedom fighter to some some people and you can be a terrorist to other people. One of the stories I like to tell that kind of gets me in the frame of mind is you have a pilot, a U.S. pilot, that is dropping a bomb over, let's say, Syria. And to the United States, that pilot is a war hero to the people getting the bomb dropped on him, he is a war criminal. And I think that's just the frame. So if you're all in the United States or if you're all in a single country and you're yelling at people that you're unpatriotic, you're patriotic, I think we just have to realize we have different lenses that we're looking through. And we view you unpatriotic because of this. Or we view you patriotic because of this. And we have to know that ultimately patriotism is a construct. It's an idea. It's an ideal. And it doesn't mean anything tangible. My friend gets so annoyed with me because he says, Glenn, you're, a, you're like a shiny nihilist. You're, you're all this, you know, Glenn coming up with these great ideas and telling speaking this stuff and it doesn't sound so harmful but you don't believe in anything and I would argue that I believe in everything both sides at the same time I am the Schrodinger's cat of idealism where I can see this person's ideal and I can see this person's ideal and I know they differ and I'm interested in the differences and I'm interested in interested in finding the solutions because Patriotism gets us into greater army diplomacy. We do this because I said so, and I have a bigger army, and we're going to do this. And if we don't continue dialogues with the people that lost, they're going to rise up, and we're just going to end up doing this over and over again. And more people are going to die. And it's not just words. It's not just actions. It's not just violence. It's human lives. And is that important or is that not important? Thanks for your time. Talk to you later.